take out your valuable time for today's interview. I, Prashant Singh, with my colleague Nandini Gupta, and uh, we have done our bachelor's from Amity University, Haryana, and moreover, we have done a lot of projects uh, in the field of forensic science, and also have uh, uh, gotten our many uh, articles published in many uh, reputed uh, platforms. So thank you, sir, again uh, for coming uh, with us. Uh, now, uh, our forensic corner is a student initiative uh, where the experts can uh, from all around the world can connect uh, together so that we can uh, provide knowledge to each and every student from ev uh, all around the world. So, sir, before we begin our interview, we would first like to introduce you to our viewers. So, Ms. Nandini Gupta, can you please introduce our respected speaker today uh, to our respected viewers? Yes, definitely. Thank you so much. Uh, Mohammed Al Shamsi, sir, is the head of firearms and toolmark section of Dubai Police. He graduated from the first Interpol Young Global Police Leaders Program in 2019. He is associated with a number of international associations, such as the Association of Firearms and Toolmarks Examiners, AFTE, where he is the point of contact for the Middle East and West Asia region. He is also a certified toolmarks examiner. He is also a part of International Association for the Property and Evidence, IAPE, where he is a representative of the Middle East region and the first certified property and evidence specialist, CPES, in Middle East and Asia. After gaining all the expertise and training, he is an adjunct faculty member at Amity University, Dubai, and he is teaching from 2017 to present to all the bachelor's and master's student in forensic science, ballistics, and advanced ballistics courses. He has lectured and trained more than 2,100 attendees in the events and training courses in 2017. He is also an external Viva examiner in firearms and toolmarks field for both UG and PG students at the institutions that teach forensic science in the UAE. Sir, your journey is really inspiring. Now, I would like to ask Prashant to continue with the interview. Thank you, Nandini. Uh, sir, shall I start with my first question? Please go ahead. Okay, thank you, sir. Uh, sir, as per your experience, what led you to choose the field of forensic science? What caught your interest? Okay, so this is actually a funny story. Every time someone asks me this, it's not <laughs> I chose forensic science, it's forensic science chose me. So it's uh, when I was a kid, I used to always uh, be the one who sticks to what is right. Okay, so what is right is right. We know what is right. So I always uh, admired police officers. I always admired the law enforcement agencies because they, they symbolize uh, uh, doing what is right or what is supposed to be right and, uh, and doing, doing it the right way, okay? Uh, but during uh, my, uh, my years as a school student, I really liked science, I really liked uh, mathematics, physics, etc. And uh, I always wanted to be in a lab where I can do certain experiments because it was the thrill, you know, of actually testing the unknown. And uh, being at a lab where you actually wear your lab coat every day uh, is always unpredictable. So it's kind of living at the, on the edge, as they say. Um, so I joined Dubai Police in 2010. And I was fortunate enough to, uh, to be a, a member of the General Department of Forensic Science and Criminology, uh, where they trusted me to actually study my, uh, my years or go, go through the years of uh, university, um, doing mechatronics engineering for my bachelor's degree, uh, as well as my master's degree, um, including my a year at the uh, Dubai Police Academy, where I did uh, general law and police science. So it's a little bit of both. Uh, and uh, it brings you back to, to what is actually forensics, where you actually apply science into law enforcement. So uh, I was fortunate enough for uh, forensics to choose me. That's great, sir. Thank you, sir. That was really nice to know. <laughs> because we, it's very hard to find nowadays people who are having a lot of keen interest in science because they, uh, a number of students are, are facing struggle like they're like oh my god i have to study physics i have to study chemistry but having a keen interest in these subjects 
really brings out the bright side of us. Uh, so, so my second it's question is, it's always yes, sir. Who wear glasses, no? Sorry, sir. I'm saying it's always the people who wear glasses. I don't know why. <laughs> yeah, I think so. You're right. I think it's uh, something with the glasses. <laughs> Uh, sir, so my second question was, uh, what were your, the obstacles you faced in your career during uh, the time when you were pursuing forensic science or when you were in this field? What were the obstacles? Okay, so, so um, at an early age, um, when I just entered forensics, it's always um, the, the, the thought where in the forensics field, you actually are dealing with expert so what is an expert an expert is someone who has um, um, uh, went through experience with experience gained a lot of knowledge and practiced it throughout time okay um, there comes this thought in mind where what can this new new guy or new girl bring to the field that we don't already know so it is always that look, whether you are in Dubai or uh, the edge of the world. It's always, um, what can you bring to the table? So a, a challenge um, that I really liked um, uh, during my past few years is actually proving everyone that the youth and the new generation can always add uh, and contribute to, to any field, whether it is forensics or not. Um, so I started, for example, with something small, like a uh, setting out tasks, okay, whether they are, or goals, setting, uh, whether they are short-term goals or long-term goals. Write them down. So for example, after two years, I want to be the first certified, blah, 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 blah. Um, uh, during this year, I would like to at least uh, um, uh, um, uh, submit two papers for uh, publishing. So something along those lines, even if it is as simple as three tasks to achieve per day at work, uh, this can be really effective because you actually um, see or you, you, you not only talk the talk, you actually walk it, walk it as well. Um, you do what you say and you actually track it. Uh, so it's kind of efficient way of doing it. it I'm not telling you it is uh, whatever you say you will do will actually happen every time. No, it's actually being flexible even with yourself. It didn't happen this time because of X, Y, Z, which I didn't uh, put into consideration, but I, at least I learned from it. So next time I set a goal similar to this, I will know what to expect. I hope that helped. Yes, sir, that did help. It was like, uh, I could just imagine the situation you would be going through when you had the plan that, yes, I have to be a certified ex examiner at this particular point of time. I have to get my paper published. So yes, I can see that there was a desire to, uh, you know, upgrade ourselves. So that's, and I really like the point that you said that uh, youth has the power to change because definitely every youth is evolving with a new idea. We have to bring out of the box ideas, then only we can do something for the world. That was really great. I, I, Thank can, you so I, can I yeah. add something? Yes, sir. Um, yes. I, I remember listening to one person say, the, I think two years ago, uh, he said, the, the eyes see what they want to see. Okay. So uh, in this scenario, you will actually only talk about what has this person achieved and what great things they have done whether it is um, achieving certain certifications, achieve, achieving something that um, um, is valuable and contributes. But the people don't see the hard times or the, the unsuccessful times when reaching that point. Um, so even if you fail once, twice, three times, it's okay. But get up and keep on moving. I always say, uh, uh, be like a clock, never stop ticking. So it's kind of that. Always keep on going. Definitely, sir. Definitely, sir. That was that was really inspiring, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, so what uh, what got your interest in this field of tool marks and uh, fire mark, uh, fire mark, uh, firearms? Like, how did you decided to pursue this as a specialization? <laughs> okay, so <laughs> this is another funny story. 
So uh, um, as soon as I started in, in the general department, we have something called uh, rotation. So you actually rotate um, um, throughout the lab and you get to know what each department or section does to be familiar with it. And back in the day, uh, it was the parent to child mentality where you need to be here. This is what is good for you. Okay. So uh, back then, I was actually in the arts and department. I didn't know I was in the arts and department because I was sitting with uh, the, the firearms and tool marks team because I felt it was interesting to me. And they said, no, you are actually assigned to this department. I told them, I don't feel it's interesting. So it's not for me. I didn't feel it was interesting as much as firearms and tool marks to me because I felt like I had more to contribute, seeing that I had uh, I actually worked in, in in workshops. I worked in garages. Uh, I was the guy who spends his day after university or after work in uh, in workshops, uh, playing with tools, doing uh, so, getting more elbow grease, if you will. You know that, that kind of dirty work. Um, um, so I went to the to the director and told him. Thank you. I know uh, this department uh, is good in one, two, three, but I think I can can contribute more if I was in this department, seeing that I had more experience in this and this and this. Uh, he said, "If you really want to, I don't mind." So it was that trust. If you know, if you think that uh, you can contribute more to a specific field and you really want that specific field, I always say, go ahead. And to me, even um, within my team, I never tell anyone from another section or anyone who comes in just as a visitor, if they would like to come and learn something, I, I tell them, never tell them no, never say no. Why? Because this person came to you with their own legs and this person wants to learn. This is very key. You can only bring the horse to the water, but you cannot force it to drink. So it is, um, uh, um, you can always put people because you think human resources are necessary, but if that person doesn't want to learn, they will not have that, um, that spark, you know, that, uh, that uh, noticeable contribution, if you will. But it's also so said like, you want uh, like if you want something with your full heart then the whole world conspires uh, like the god creates the path itself only like whatever you want you yeah. will get it if you want it seriously you get it. yeah but keep on trying yes, it will not happen important. magically <laughs> keep on doing definitely <laughs> god is asking us hard work and without hard work even god won't trust us yeah we have uh, <laughs> <laughs> the other day, I would say, <laughs> the other day, our uh, general director was sitting with us, okay, as the, the youth. Sometimes we have certain um, um, uh, sessions where we get director without the managers, just to get a feel. What are you feel? What do you think? What can we do better? That kind of thing, okay. So everyone, once this kind of topic starts opening, okay, they start complaining. We need this. <laughs> We need this. We tried doing this, but it didn't work. The, he said something that really made me laugh. He said, you are not in heaven. Everything will go easily. Okay. <laughs> Keep on pushing. It will eventually work. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. But, You're uh, right, sir. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's true. <laughs> yeah. Because we are, it's up to us on how we consider ourselves. We can make a heaven and it can be misery for us also. It's up to us only at the end. Very cool. uh, now, Nandini, I will request you to continue with the remaining questions. Yeah, I'll continue. Uh, sir, how would you describe forensic science work in the UAE? Okay. So forensic science is, is one of the noticeable uh, fields. Uh, we are considered as the, the smart guys in any kind of organization, whether it is law enforcement or not. 
um, um, it is not specifically towards uh, law enforcement. Um, sometimes we even get uh, consult consultation requests from other parties, um, non-crime related for certain experimentation work or whatever. Um, uh, however, in the UAE, we, uh, I see it at least as um, it has achieved international standards. Okay, so for example, uh, an example of Dubai police um, has a accreditation of ISO 17025 ILAC G19. Um, it has the, the first actual lab. So this was uh, recently uh, published, which is the, the first forensics lab outside uh, North America of achieving the International Association of Property and Evidence um, accreditation. Uh, we even are um, a pioneering uh, within the forensics field, whether it is in Dubai, in Abu Dhabi, or else. Um, certain certain publications uh, with regards, for example, to, to 3D printed firearms and how do you actually examine it if you have certain scenarios that come across um, uh, the field um, in DNA in, in whatever the case may be, there is always room for improvement. Okay, um, you, we, I remember three years ago, okay, uh, we had this mentality where we need to always see what is abroad to learn from them. Okay, we always need to learn from them and apply it here. But we thought to ourselves, why do we actually need to learn from them? Why can't we be the ones that they come to us and learn from us? So it was, uh, it was the, a matter of uh, spreading awareness. It was a matter of actually doing uh, the, uh, the work and really being competent at the same time. Because at the end of the day, it's all about credibility. You know, um, achievements and, and uh, pioneering results um, add to that credibility. When you say uh, we are X, Y, Z, People believe you because you, they know you are credible. You have achieved this, this kind of accreditation, whether you are talking about a, a body um, or a department, or you are talking about a specific individual. So it is, it is a matter of that and this. Yes, sir. Yes, so that is true. Sir, I was seeing your uh, personality. It, I can uh, just uh, like try to imagine myself in your position. It feels like uh, you have seen a lot of uh, ups and downs because the way you're saying that, because yeah, it is a true scenario that people, uh, not only people, us, if we talk about our students also, we are like, uh, yeah, the foreign people have better knowledge compared to us, but we are, the people have this tendency that they don't want to work on themselves. They are like, what is already there, I should just learn that and I think I'll be there. They don't know, okay. they want to photocopy it basically. They don't want to yeah. self-exist. Yeah. This is, this is something uh, during COVID. Yeah, this is something I noticed during COVID. You'll see that uh, uh, there is this example, okay, where uh, on a rainy day, you have two people who sell umbrellas. One of them, because it's rainy, he goes back home and stays inside. But the other person, even when it's rainy, he goes outside and sells umbrella because everyone needs it. So if you, uh, during COVID, for example, at least myself, uh, because everyone was home, everyone had a hard time uh, going to work, etc. cetera. Um, so I said, at least, I'll try to contribute to the field by, by giving workshops, uh, presenting lectures, webinars, etc. cetera. Um, so they say, they say, Mohammed, why? I see you very active in LinkedIn and you present so many webinars. Why? I tell them, why not? Very easy, why, why not? People need it. People are, are just here, uh, for example, at home, can't go to work, uh, can't go to school, can't go to university. Um, at least like make new friends. It doesn't need to be, uh, it doesn't need to be physical. At least make new, uh, new relationships. Um, you can stay at home and uh, write papers together. Um, it doesn't need to be experimentation work, but uh, work on yourself. If you do not reach out, people will not know you. 
if you do not work on yourself, you will not achieve uh, what you want. Okay, so it's uh, it's it's like, uh, uh, is it easy? No, but is it worth it? Absolutely, that kind of thing. And we always think, sir, like uh, we have job opportunities in foreign countries and all. Why not in India? Why not in your country? Why don't you create yourself a job, right? Exactly. You know, the, the funny part about it is, is when you actually meet the people uh, from the region. For example, let's take India. When you meet people from India um, uh, during COVID, I've actually interacted with a lot of institutions, with a lot of universities, with a lot of personnel examiners, for, uh, forensic uh, science examiners from India. And they are extremely knowledgeable. I mean, uh, you have no idea how much they would like to contribute, okay? Uh, but it's a matter of, of uh, mentality. So you think this is right, but you don't actually try. But when you try knowing other people, you, you say, it's interesting. It's, it's like, the, I've met someone who said, one uh, one phrase that I really like. He said, "It's it's the diamond in the rough. Okay, the diamond is always under dirt and under everything, but when you find it and polish it, it is very shiny. So it is that kind of thing." That's very true, sir. So uh, shall we move these, to the next? Uh, these virtual meetings are. So yeah, these you... virtual meetings are definitely uh, started. Uh, like COVID had brought a lot of pain to a lot of people but definitely COVID got us the opportunity to interact worldwide so that we can and have our strength. This is a really great opportunity and the people who have definitely used this opportunity, they have definitely seen a change. Yes, sir. Shall we go on to the next question? Yeah, please. Yeah, yeah sir. What's the best thing you like about this field? Every, every day is a new day. So um, even if you set goals, even if you have your own task work, uh, certain, certain cases are routine. Okay, they, they are easy cases. They come and you, do, you know what you do, etc. But every now and then there is something challenging. So uh, and the ideas and the way you think isn't always the same. If you would like to, to improve, um, and work are are willing to work on yourself and have the patience. Trust me, every day is a new day. Um, you come here, uh, you say to yourself, okay. For me, for any person in the world, there is only one thing that is constant, which is time, 24 hours. If someone tells you, please give me extra time, tell them, sorry, you have 24 hours, I have 24 hours, I cannot give you for my pocket, okay? <laughs> but uh, during those 24 hours, how do you uh, use that time wisely? So uh, whether it is a new case, uh, you don't have experience. Uh, uh, whether uh, um, what can you what can you do in that time? Do it effectively. Do it uh, do it the best way you can. It's about there is something called uh, so between knowledge and experience. Okay, so sorry, between experience and an expert, there's one small difference. Both of them have the knowledge of work. They spend time practicing, etc. However, an expert in the field is always expected to know the past, okay, and is always up to date. So, for example, um, uh, if you ask them in a certain field, if it was, for example, firearms and tool marks, and you ask a fire and a tool marks expert, um, what is the significance of nails in, in the tool marks field? Okay, someone who, who practices firearms and tool marks but has not come across uh, this in their everyday, uh, everyday work, okay, might not have uh, an idea what do you mean. But someone who is an expert, uh, because they read constantly, because they, they, they know the past of the field and they are up to date and they c keep on, on, on contact with uh, their colleagues from all around the world, they might tell you, ah, yes, nails have almost the exact same striations of 
bullets or or um, striations caused by tools. Um, so you can actually either fracture match them or you can actually compare the striations on them and etc. You know. So it is, it is, but uh, try it. I don't think you knew this. Look at your finger, raise it a little bit up, you'll see certain lines. Ah, see, she's looking. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't knew about that. <laughs> That's very nice. <laughs> it's interesting. It's a new thing to add on. Like, you should keep adding oh, yeah. on. Right. Yeah. Right. Uh, so next question. Shall we move? Okay. Yes. So the field of forensic science is not known among the people, among the people, and a large awareness needs to be created about the same. So, what's your opinion about that matter? Um, I don't strongly agree with this because usually the most interesting shows on TV are the ones like CSI, you know, Dexter, etc. The ones that have crime, crime related to it. Even in, if you remember, there was there was this cartoon back in the day called. Detective Conan, okay? Um, even they spoke or during the cartoon talk about uh, certain techniques, for example, um, uh, showing blood using luminol or, or whatever the case may be. Uh, forensics is there, but it is the, the matter of specialized knowledge that might not be, be there or certain assumptions that are in place. So, for example, uh, fingerprints usually are left on, on certain objects, whether they are knives, swords, firearms, anything, generally speaking. Um, however, an assumption would be because this is caused by sweaty uh, sweat matter and is left on another object, if you put this object in water, then the fingerprints will go, okay? But this is not true. Even if you put a, a knife that has fingerprints in water for, uh, for three to four days, and then you send someone to come and get it, okay, depending on the conditions, uh, you still can find fingerprints on it. So it is the, the assumption compared to the actual knowledge that is not there. Definitely, sir. Even uh, in India, like people say, what is forensic science? What are you doing forensic science? You should have gone through biology, some chemistry, like you can, you can do that. But like when I say that I'm, yeah. I'm like, I do that, I do this. Oh, that's interesting. That's very interesting. This just like say that only. Sometimes they think it's black magic, you know? <laughs> Sometimes they ask you to do things that are, that are impossible. <laughs> Well, uh, <laughs> that's true. <laughs> when was this firearm here? I don't know. You ask him, when was it here? I don't know. <laughs> was it actually <laughs> fired? Yes, I will tell you this. <laughs> <laughs> really? Uh, so next question. As per your uh, respective experience, how much do you recommend others to pursue this field? And what are the things that an aspirant need to keep in mind while pursuing forensic science as a career. Okay, so whether I recommend or not, um, if you like it, go ahead. It is not an easy job. Uh, it is dirty, trust me. Uh, you never get enough sleep. But if you like the thrill of staying always on your toes and your judgment, uh, either uh, obviously after verifying, but your judgment makes someone uh, go to jail or not, then it is your responsibility if you like that kind of responsibility. So for us, it is, it is uh, uh, you need to be careful. Okay. So you need to be careful when you are in forensics field. Um, for you to consider, you might actually put someone innocent in jail. You might actually make someone who is a criminal free. Okay. You need to always be competent. You cannot um, um, leave this field with with um, certain practices, okay? That shouldn't be there. Um, so it always comes back to you. If you like it, please be my guest. It will be more. Uh, I will be the, the the happiest person in the world. Every time I teach certain batch at university, I tell them after I finish, "Welcome to your new family." 
So uh, I always I always like growing the forensics field uh, family, uh, but something to keep to keep in mind. I've noticed recently, sometimes forensic science examiners when they take this off they are bold, okay. But uh, yeah, when uh, I noticed something recently, so we have a lot of students that graduate, uh, but cannot find work. Okay, which is uh, usually this is this is the topic uh, that the youth are interested in. Uh, but it is not always the case where you need to actually can apply your knowledge in a lab. Okay, what do you mean by that? Besides a forensic science lab, you can also apply your 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 knowledge or skills to other labs. You can apply your knowledge and skills to certain forensic science service providers. So. Uh, for example, when we buy certain devices, uh, you can have certain knowledge in those devices and try to sell them based on your knowledge, learn more, etc. It is the same field. You can be in academia, do research in forensic science. It is not an issue. Um, uh, you can even open your own uh, your own company with regards to forensic science and see uh, and find a certain niche. Um, in your field uh, and see how can you improve it. Um, um, even even as a consultant, so it is uh, individual consultant. It, the, the opportunities are there, but do not have a one lane mentality. So whether this is the only goal, if I reach there, okay, if no, I will die. I mean, uh, have have certain certain options to explore. Um, try to make try to make friends. I mean, um, you will always you will always come across certain opportunities. Okay, uh, and this is one of the the things I, I really like about uh, one of my favorite philosophers. His name is uh, Jim Rowan. And he said, uh, some people are usually, they say they, they are lucky, okay? But uh, luck has nothing to do with it. If you are prepared and a, an opportunity presents itself, then take it. If, it. if you do not, it might not come again. But when you take it and you, and you take this opportunity, people say you're lucky. So don't believe that. Always be prepared. When the opportunity comes, take it. Wonderful. Yes, sir. that is very true. So thank you so much for uh, pro uh, giving your time for our interview questions, and we will be also very thankful that you were, maybe we would be sounding. I hope it's all right for you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> No, no, anytime, anytime. I'm uh, more than happy to always um, uh, meet new faces and meet new friends. I mean, um, I'm always here if you need me, uh, whether it is a personal question or a professional question, I'm always here. Um, thank you once again for uh, Forensics Corner for this, for this opportunity. I'm actually in my section, I have a happiness corner. So at the oh. moment I am in this happiness corner. Yes, <laughs> whenever they feel my team feel stress, I go to them. You need the, you need the, you need the happiness fix. Go to the room. Wow. <laughs> wow, that is so nice. Yeah, that's awesome. It's like uh, basically, yeah, it's really innovative. Yeah, you need to. I mean, uh, especially in forensic science, it's uh, uh, your lab is your second home. I mean, if you do not feel happy um, doing what you what you do, then this is a problem. You cannot actually uh, contribute more that, than what is asked from you. You cannot um, uh, present your skills and show that you actually care. You know, uh, very. It's very important for me um, to make sure that that my team members are always happy. Uh, we have that uh, that cohesion, you know, uh, that good vibe. Um, it's not it's not coming to work and we do not see each other. No, for us, we we come to work after we we go to the gym together. After the gym, 
everyone goes home. After that, we meet up for dinner. Uh, it's not like work relationship. It is actually friend, friend. You know, you, you meet every day, give calls, etc. Very normal. That's really inspiring, sir. That is really, really inspiring. And I hope our viewers will also find this uh, interview session very, very inspiring. So thank you so much, sir, for being with the Forensic Corner. Anytime, anytime, brother. Anytime. Thank, thank you, you guys sir. for your time. Appreciate it. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. So guys, stay tuned because we are going to come up with more of such great interviews. Uh, uh, thank you so much for being with us. Thank you. Stay safe. Keep growing. Bye-bye.